Did you know that you can laser engrave 3D files? Well, today we're gonna show you how as we open and review Algo's Alpha Mark II 20 watt laser engraver. Comparing it to other 20 watts that we've reviewed, whether or not we'd recommend it and why. Better stay tuned, this is your Geek Fix. I don't have a lot of experience in the past with Algo uh, or their products, but I gotta say right off the bat, just from what I've seen on the box as well as other things that they've sent me, uh, I'm kind of excited about this and I'll tell you about why as we go through. On the outside, uh, it does say 3.5 LCD screen, powerful laser beams, 10 times faster engraving, 400 by 400 millimeter engraving area. It runs a four core dual MCU, not Marvel affiliated, built-in Wi-Fi, mobile Android and iOS controls, and a heavy duty metal frame. It also says that it has more than seven safety features. So with that said, uh, should we open it? All right, well, right off the bat, I wonder what this is. Is that important at all? I don't know yet. <laughs> but it looks really, really nice. I like the packaging, very organized. Uh, let's see what this is. Looks like this is some. Oh, there's a quick start guide for the air pump and the laser engraver. Okay, we'll put those over here. And then we got this blue one. And uh, it feels like I got a bunch of a laser engraver consumable package. I think these are, oh yeah. I got some Velcro and zip ties, I think for putting things together initially. You got a brush and then these cards, which I love. I actually, I graved a whole bunch of these to take to the Fallout vent in Good Springs last year, and they came out awesome. So uh, then we got some stuff for cutting. So we got, some, oh, actually, I thought this was wood. It is not. I think this is the first laser engraver that I've gotten so far of, of four or five, where it, uh, it actually not only says you can cut with acrylic, but sends you acrylic to cut, test cut with. So definitely gonna be trying that out. Oh, and I thought this was just a, a piece uh, that was kind of just on the bottom uh, for separating things. Nope, this is actually a big piece of wood uh, for cutting with. Taking this piece off now uh, exposes all of our laser parts that we have. I think what I need to be doing at this point in time is using that quick setup guide. Uh, because it's probably gonna tell me a certain way it wants to take everything out. And, uh, and what I need to do as I go. So this is starting with the laser engraver, quick setup guide. I noticed on there a bunch of their materials, they have engraving happiness. Getting started here. Sure enough, it has all the parts I'm gonna be needing to focus on at this point. So, uh, and all the bits and pieces that we're gonna have to assemble. Got my pump. It is nice that this comes with a pump. Uh, a lot of laser engravers, that's like a side thing you have to purchase. Here's our glasses. Pretty comparable to other ones that I've seen. Let's see here, ooh, look at that. This is cool, I like that. What a nice little box. I also like the quality. I mean, look at some of the parts on this. It's nice and heavy duty, just like they said. And I think that is just about everything with the exception of this right here, which is our actual 20 watt, by the way, laser. It looks like it must have its own fan as well. So like I said, I mean, it comes with quite a bit. Uh, it has very nice looking parts. Uh, the question is, how long does it take us to put it together in comparison to other lasers? Woo, look. I mean, honestly. Thank you. 
So a couple of things so far. One is uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of Allen wrenches. Um, they, if I could have, I try, I try to stick with the tools that they send me. So just to show you how quick it is to put them together. If I have to use an actual Allen wrench, I think it's much better if I just tighten it down with my fingers first and then just use this to tighten it at the very end. That'll speed up your process a lot more. The second one is that when I was putting this together, it actually, it was pretty easy to put together with the exception of, I, I got confused about one of the steps and, and that was uh, that was this first arm that I was putting on. And the reason for that is that uh, the, the actual piece has this arm on it, uh, which has, which is what holds the laser. It was connected to it by a set of cables, but that's not true in the picture. So I guess I, I was trying to make the wrong arm work initially. Um, so that used up part of my time as well. The other thing that throws me off a lot on this is this part. Um, I'm about to put this on and it is the last part to put on. Typically you have to make sure that you slide it on uh, somewhere in between um, because it, it connects in between. This one connects at the top, uh, which I can see a lot of benefits to that. So I'm kind of excited about the way that this is assembled and put together. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to fix or to do things with if you have to. Boy, I hope I didn't speak too soon. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna start attaching this now. So the first thing we're gonna do is we pull down this arm right here, slide this inside, and then I pull that arm back up it should lock it uh, temporarily. Next, I guess I best, I'm just I'm just sticking in cables. Is essentially it. So all right, and with that, I have built my laser um, and uh, put it uh, completely together. The next thing that I need though, before I connect it to a computer and, and before I start cutting, is something else that they sent me. Um, I believe they might sell this separately, but they were nice enough to uh, send it to us. Uh, none of the other companies we worked with um, have necessarily done that. So I can't compare some of, of theirs, but it's always good to have one of these plates. This will keep it from burning my table. And then a honeycomb. This is a really nice, really nice honeycomb uh, platform that they sent me. Um, the only one I've been using so far has been by X Tool, and honestly, this one's way better. I also just noticed that I have two. Ooh, huh two backup lenses so um, I can actually switch them out I don't think I've got that with any of my other laser cutters either that's very cool level or to figure out how high my laser needs to be for example for me to cut on one of these cards right here uh, basically I would be placing the card down and then we're using this little tool that they give us this little leveler and uh, then I just close it down until it meets the edge on top, like so, and then I lock it into place. So now, supposedly, my laser is close enough to cut. I like how close that is, actually. Uh, there's no real room for a laser to escape out or for me to have something bounce off. And then, like I said, if I want to, I can use these plugs right here and pop those in there to hold it into place. There we go. So it's nice and nice and solid. I, I wish I would have had that actually when I did all those cards uh, or last year because uh, that would have really helped. I had to use tape instead uh, because magnets usually don't work that great on this. So, at any rate, very cool. And then, and then. We're going to connect up this as well. This is my blower. Oh, I have not had one of these yet that actually has a way of, of adjusting how much it's it's blowing. That's really cool. I also like, I think I mentioned this on one of the other ones we got. I also like when the blower itself gets electricity 
uh, from the, the unit itself. Uh, we've had so many things where the biggest thing I didn't like about X-Tool was how many things I had to plug into the wall. Uh, it was kind of ridiculous. So it's kind of nice to be able to have something you just have one plug or two plugs you have to plug into. We have our power right here. We have our air right here. You get a serial port and then you get your USB. So with that, we're ready to test, cut some things. All right, so let's try it out. Uh-oh. Well, that's not a good thing. So I contacted support. It turns out that when I was putting this together, I must have pushed this button uh, as I was doing it and didn't realize it. So if I did do that, if that's the problem, all I have to do is just turn it this way up, sure enough, and it pops up. So now when I hold down that power button, it turns on and... Whoa, ho, ho. So language engraving, let's go for engraving. So I can go on to the SD card and I could try uh, looking up different things. So there's already some that are in here uh, that I could cut, different things that I could cut. Very interesting design choice there. Um, let's see here. Okay. <laughs> uh, so you could cut that, I guess, if you wanted to. Going to the engraving here. Well, uh, wood. We want to change that to um, metal. I think I, uh, I think I didn't line it up very well. <laughs> Something to be aware of is you really need to uh, wipe off that black residue afterwards. And once when you do, looks pretty clear. Look at that, it looks like an art piece kind of. <laughs> so, so yeah, it, it looks like it does the engraving on the card just as good as my other one did. Pretty easy to use. I tried it again. Got this one right here. Um, so there you go. You can also put in your own jpeg files into there and uh and i was able to make that so pretty good just as good as my other cards also so one thing i like already is that a this uh screen is built in i've have another one where i thought i'd like the screen being detachable but honestly i've never had a reason to pull it off um in order to control it, it doesn't go far enough for you to to have any reason for doing that and on the flip side uh, when I'm storing it, it's a pain in the butt. I love that this is just built in. It's just going to be part of this. So a little bit easier to store as well. And it's really easy to navigate uh, using it. Um, I'm able to, you know, pick the things I want to do. I have multiple ways of accessing information, including virtually, uh, Bluetooth control. So next what I want to do is I want to test out cutting acrylic. But not only am I going to cut acrylic, but I'm going to show you how to cut in 3D. That's right, 3D relief etching is the best term for it. Not two-dimensional, it looks like 3D. I mean, actually, 3D etching. The setting in Lightburn for 3D etching is not available for this laser. But you can still very much do the same thing. And I'm going to show you how. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for an STL file, a 3D file. Uh, I'm looking for something Fallout related in this case. And thanks to Graphit, uh, they have a really cool coin that they made, a T60 Power Armor Memorial Coin. That's what I'm wanting to print, but this is an STL file for 3D printing, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download that file, and then I'm going to take it to STL to PNG, which is a free service. I'll select my STL file in there, and it'll turn that file into the PNG that I need in order to be able to laser cut it. The blacks are the most that it's going to cut, the whites are the least that it's going to cut, and everything in between would be gradients of that. And then I'm going to import that into my light burning program, and I'm going to make it the size that I want it. The problem is, if I did it just the way that it is, it's going to very lightly kind of do what I'm wanting. For me to really make it truly more and more 3D, I want to add a few other images. I'm going to take the same image into Photoshop 
And I'm going to make certain areas completely white that I want to stick out the most. And I'm just going to add more contrast, basically, going all the way to darkest darks, blacks, up to my whitest whites. So my highest levels to my lowest levels. And then I'm going to put that image on top of the other image. And I'm also adding a circle that it's going to cut afterwards to, to cut out the coin. And to get this effect, I'm going to have to set my image mode to grayscale. Once when that was ready, I go ahead and hit play, and it begins etching it out. It cuts one image layer first, then cuts the other image layer, and then cut out my coin. And when we're done, not only did it cut it out, once when I clean it up a little bit, you can see that there's these layers. The, it's I've got these nice tight lines and raised areas, but then I also have areas where you can see like with his shoulder, where it's slowly transitioning from the level of the coin upward and it's nice and rounded. And if I wanted to, I could keep doing that. I could I could add more images that have different levels of contrast. So as it goes back and it cuts and cuts and cuts, it'll it'll trim that down even more. But I really, I'm pretty satisfied with the way it looks. It also did a great job on cutting some images out of wood. So what do I think of this? I, I think it's a great, great unit. Uh, it looks great. It works great. I was able to use it both with my computer and without, and we were able to be a little bit inventive with it. So what are you gonna do? What are you gonna make and burn with this? Let us know in the comments below. To learn more about the Algo Laser, check out the links below. Like, subscribe, comment below, and stay tuned for more of your Geek Fix.